stay inside. Tell the people you love. Call them, text them, email them. Tell them to stay inside. This is not a joke. This is an extremely dangerous situation. And I know... All right, guys, so once again, we got to talk about the biggest threat to this country, which undoubtedly in my mind is not the Republican Party. It's not January 6th. It's not Trump supporters. It's not any of the things that you're on mainstream liberal media. It is actually progressive criminal justice reform, which is something I've stated on my channel a thousand times because this is actually what is getting people killed in this country okay innocent people are losing their lives because of soft on crime policies that are emboldening criminals and allowing them to walk freely on the street despite the fact that a lot of these criminals have criminal histories that suggest that they should be in prison not out on the street murdering and terrorizing civilians which is exactly what happened last night okay in memphis tennessee as a teenager by the name of Ezekiel Kelly was accused of killing four and injuring three others in a rampage streamed on Facebook. This morning, a suspect in custody after a deadly shooting spree in Memphis, Tennessee. 19-year-old Ezekiel Kelly is accused of driving around the city, shooting and killing four people, wounding three others, all while streaming the violence on Facebook Live. In a Facebook video that's now been removed, the suspect was reportedly seen walking into an auto parts store and opening fire. Our citizens in Memphis and Shelby County were going about their business, ordinary citizens doing ordinary things, getting off from work picking up children from daycare, just going about their ordinary lives when it was all of a sudden shattered. Many families were shattered tonight. Police saying the spree lasted more than two hours, spanning eight different crime scenes. Police say Kelly later stole a car at gunpoint, officers eventually locating the vehicle, leading to a high-speed pursuit where Kelly was eventually arrested. But the massive manhunt paralyzing Memphis into the evening. Residents urged to stay home, bus service was suspended, and a minor league baseball game placed on lockdown. The city in shock. This is no way for us to live. And it is not acceptable. The people of our city were confronted with the type of violence no one should have to face. Police say this all began around 1 a.m. Wednesday, where Kelly is accused of shooting and killing a man in the driveway of a home. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Now, doesn't this sound a little familiar, guys? A mass shooting streamed on Facebook or online. There was one that happened in Buffalo earlier this year that got a whole lot of attention from the mainstream liberal media. Um, and we all know why it got attention. And you probably haven't heard of this story until I, you know, I'm talking about it right now because it just doesn't fit the narrative of the mass shootings that the mainstream liberal media should tell us that we should be worried about. However, it is the closest thing that we have to the mass shootings that we see every single day in these inner liberal cities that, again, the mainstream liberal media wants to ignore for certain reasons, right? So with that being said, um, some people are fed up because Memphis, Tennessee is one of the most dangerous cities, if not the most dangerous city in America. As last year, they had a record number of murders with more than 350. Okay. They have a per capita murder rate of 29 to a hundred thousand. So that means 29 murders per 100,000 people, which is higher than Chicago's per capita murder rate, which is 18 for every 100,000 people. So arguably, Memphis, Tennessee is more dangerous than Chicago. However, we never hear about what's going on in the city. However, that doesn't mean that the residents of Memphis aren't <laughs> noticing or you know concerned about what's happening. They're being terrorized, so terrorized that a reporter broke down and was visibly shaken while covering this tragic mass shooting live on air take a look go stay inside tell the people you love call them text them email them tell them to stay inside this is not a joke this is an extremely dangerous situation and i know <sighs> i'm 
Memphis is tired right now. Yeah, I'm good. I'm with you all. Memphis is tired right now. The Eliza Fletcher kidnapping and abduction and murder. The other crimes we've had this year leading up to this. It's difficult right now. Bear with me. It's a very nerve-wracking night. It has been a very difficult week for those who know the Fletcher family, for those who know the family of that minister who was shot and killed in her driveway during a carjacking, who know the community advocate from Whitehaven who was shot and killed. It has been difficult in Memphis. So they're going to find this guy until they do stay inside. Again, yeah, that is terrifying. It is absolutely terrifying to have a reporter on TV telling people to stay inside. Don't come out because the city is too dangerous. You have a lunatic on the loose, which to me seems to be a very routine occurrence in cities like Memphis, where they have mass shootings almost every single day. Again, like Chicago, right? Again, the city's too dangerous for people to go outside. And nobody's saying anything about it. Nobody cares about it. And the reason why is because it doesn't fit the narrative, okay? The narrative of the so-called white supremacists being the number one threat to this country, right? It actually fits the narrative that the mainstream liberal media doesn't want to talk about, which is all the violence going on in these inner cities by, you know, young men who happen to be of color, right? But they don't want to, you know, talk about that because it's racist. It's racist. It's also doesn't fit the narrative that is going to look good for some of these soft on crime Democrat run. Yeah. So I want y'all to understand the insanity here. Okay. Of the criminal justice system, right. That allowed this to happen. Um, this guy had multiple felony charges in the past pending against him, uh, including being charged with attempted first degree murder, attempted first degree murder, which he pled guilty to and was downgraded to aggravated assault in April 2021. Kelly was then sentenced to three years in prison, but released in March of 2022 after serving just 11 months of his sentence. Then this shooting rampage happens less than six months after this guy was allowed back on the street in which again, he allegedly Shot and killed at least four people, injured at least three others. He's also accused of two armed carjackings that happened in an attempt to flee from police. So he's also running from police as well, too. All this streamed on Facebook. <laughs> Again, it, it blows my mind. Like, this guy should be in jail. How in the world did you allegedly attempt to murder somebody and then you get out of jail in less than a year. <laughs> How does that happen? I'm not sure. Now, here's the kicker in this case, guys. Um, the Shelby County prosecutor, right, which is the county that includes Memphis, was a Republican, Miss Amy Weidrich, who just got voted out and replaced with a progressive Democrat who's going to be even softer on crime. A changing of the guard at Shelby County's top prosecutor. Democrat Steve Mulroy is taking over as Shelby County DA when he's sworn in next month. Now this comes after a resounding double-digit election night victory over Republican incumbent Amy Wyrick. His win means a different management and philosophy of how to address public safety as well as punishment. Brad Broders is here in the studio now. Brad, uh, the election is over, so now what? Well, Richard, a criminal justice reform act of against Mulroy's win gives new hope to new ideas and a different vision of how cases are tried and defendants are held. For years, criminal justice reforms were a main focus for those with the Memphis Interfaith Coalition for Action and Hope, or MICA. Among their goals, creating a conviction review unit, cutting down on juvenile transfers to adult system, and lowering bonds for some nonviolent offenses. MICA leaders admit while those proposals are a lot to tackle, if Mulroy can at least implement some of them, they believe it will go a long way in making the justice system more just. With us having a new DA, it gives us the opportunity to have somebody, obviously, with new ideas, um, somebody who's going to come in with fresh eyes into the position. And um, so that's always a good working point for us. Local political analysts believe Mulroy's honeymoon won't last long, especially with recent high-profile cases. Next month, Mulroy will decide on whether to rescind Amy Wyrick's recommendation to try the accused 15-year-old killers of Reverend Atora Eason-Williams as adults. We really don't know yet 
what will happen with Mr. Mulroy, who is a law professor and never managed an office like the DA's office. How will that happen? What will happen there? He says the community will learn that his office will be the most transparent office the county has seen in a very long time because it would ultimately keep people safe. If we can reduce the systemic discrimination that occurs in our system and reduce the burden on innocent people and restore public confidence in the fairness of our system, then the community, particularly the African American community, will cooperate with law enforcement and uh, provide tips and serve as witnesses and report crimes. Mulroy says seeing the impacts of a reformed DA isn't going to happen overnight, but believe people will start to notice it soon. Reporting in Memphis, I'm Brittany Clements. Yeah, so even though this happened under the Republican DA, we don't know who's responsible for this guy's release, okay? We don't have that information yet. Probably some woke judge, okay? Um, although, again, you know, this guy's first degree uh, attempted murder charges was dropped down to lesser charges of aggravated assault. I don't necessarily know why that happened. I don't know the full story behind this guy's attempted murder charges. But the Republican DA had a reputation for being tough on crime, maybe too tough on crime, as she was criticized for going out to people who were trying to vote illegally and for not making a commitment as to whether or not she was going to go out to people obtaining illegal abortions. Those are allegedly some of the reasons why she got uh, voted out. However, it wasn't because she was too soft on crime. Right. But despite her record, OK, and what may or may not have happened under her watch, I think we all can agree that the direction that we're supposed to go in here is not to get softer on crime, which is what it sounds like this D.A. is going to do. Even the Democrat mayor of Memphis realizes that Ezekiel Kelly was charged with criminal attempted first degree murder, but pled guilty in April of 2021 to the lesser charge of aggravated assault. He was sentenced to three years, but only served 11 months in prison. The problem is not the Memphis Police Department, because they're arresting people. The problem is this judicial system that will not punish. That is our problem. Yeah. So again, even the Democrat mayor realizes like, okay, something's wrong here, okay? When a guy is charged with attempted first degree murder, it gets dropped down to aggravated assault and he serves less than a year in prison for what was originally first degree murder or attempted first degree murder. Um, yeah, that's a problem. Whoever was responsible for letting this guy out of jail early, which again, probably was some woke judge, blood is on their hands. And this is why I try to tell you guys, um, the progressive criminal justice reform system, what's happening with these woke prosecutors and DAs, these judges, is the most dangerous threat to this country. We hear stories like this time and time and time again. Somebody has an extension rap sheet. They should be locked up for a long, long, long time. They shouldn't be in society. However, they're being let out early because of wokeness, because it's racist to lock people up now. And they end up killing more people, committing more crimes. Happens all too often, man. And the problem is, is that the Republican Party is not focused hard enough on these issues. They're playing games with the Democrats going back and forth about Trump, right? Instead of focusing on the things that are actually affecting people's lives, like crime. If the Republicans kept the focus on crime and never responded to the Trump stuff, I think it would be a sure thing that the Republicans would blow out the midterm elections, whether that's at the local level or the national level. But see, because they want to play the Democrat game, and talk about everything else to decide what the Democrats are actually failing at, what's actually affecting people's lives, like crime, um, I think we're seeing the polls be a lot closer than they should be. Republicans either have a messaging problem or these people in these liberal cities have a listening problem because there is no way in the world that these cities should still be electing woke DAs. And Democrats to run these cities, especially considering the last two years, man. But hey, maybe this is what some of these people want. You know, maybe they want to keep electing woke prosecutors and DAs and, you know, liberal activist judges uh, to run their cities. But again, we all see what the result of that is, right? We all see how progressive criminal justice reform has essentially destroyed these inner cities. That's the biggest threat to this country. Criminal justice reform, not white supremacy, not MAGA, not Trump, 
Not none of that. It is progressive criminal justice reform. That is what's actually taking people's lives in this country. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.